around Trump will go after them for what they have done to this country. They know that their funding will be cut off, and worse yet, some of them may actually be indicted for crimes against the laws on, on, on the books right now. What other organizations do you think have done harm to the American way? In plain English. Okay, MAL, Dave, you're next up. Name the organization. Black Lives Matters has to be on the top of the list. I want to know who's funding them and who's organizing these agitators that are ruining As far them. as I know, George Soros funded Black Lives Matter. He's one of the chief funders of this organization that does everything it can to undermine the American, uh, American society, disrupt and undermine American society under the guise that all black people are victims. Public enemy number one in my book. Well, okay, so you name Black Lives Matter as an organization. Very good se selection. Let's keep going here. Let's see what other people have to say and why. Dave on WMAL, name an organization you think is, anti let's say, un-American and acting in a subversive manner, an organization that needs to be looked into. What would that be? Planned Parenthood. They do nothing for, as far as women's health go, they just ruin lives. They're nothing but slaughterhouses. They do nothing for women's health. Well, this is an interesting question. I don't know that you can declare Planned Parenthood as a subversive group. I would say it's an evil group. Uh, any group that uh, basically is in the business of selling baby body parts is a very evil group. I think they could be handled very easily with a new Congress by having their funding cut off completely. I don't even think you have to investigate Planned Parenthood. You can just cut them off at the funding level. They'll be out of business before long. So I wouldn't even waste any money on them. I would just defund them, and that would be the end of them. That's like defanging a snake. WCFO in Georgia. Brian, who's on your list? Go ahead, please. Hey, right in our backyard, we have the uh, Carter Center, uh, which is Jimmy Carter's uh, outfit, and... Uh what really caught my eye 10 years ago was in when he rubber stamped the Venezuelan uh, elections, calling them very fair. And we know that Chavez, you know, who's been totally uh, anti-American uh, for decades, you know, was got the good upstanding vote from Carter. Yeah, Jimmy Carter is a, has been a lifetime subversive, in my opinion. An all-around snake of an individual who has spent millions of dollars on public relations imagery in order to make us think he's a kindly, grandfatherly guy. I don't see him as that. I know what you're talking about. When Chavez the dictator was in that country, it was Jimmy Carter who went over there to certify it and stamp it as a, as a legitimate election when we all know it was a rigged election. That's what you're talking about. But have they done and are they doing in the Carter Center, in your opinion, any further damage here in America to American uh, to the to the American way? I would say that they're disrupting the American uh Israeli, you know, long standing uh, you know, relationship with their continued support of an independent Palestinian state. That's my opinion. Yeah. Well Jimmy Carter is a long time, lifetime Israel hater that we know. That's his uh, stock and trade. He's gotten very far with that. I guess it would be a legitimate question to see what money he's getting from a named terrorist group if in fact that turns out to be the case. Is he receiving money from Hamas or Hezbollah it's through a third party? Don't know. Thanks for the call. Interesting topic. Back in a minute. The latest uh, NBC Wall Street Journal poll, by no means a uh, reliable poll, but it's what it is. Trump more than doubles national lead in NBC WSJ poll, which is very good news. If there was an election today, it would be a landslide, 85-15 against the old woman. And he's going to win by a landslide when he runs. And, you know, I keep hearing, like, uh, amongst polls with African Americans, who you think would be all be Democrat, even he said that it was 25% of African Americans self-identify as interested in voting for him. That means that it's probably double that. Because there are people who, when they're polled, would never even admit who they're going to vote for out of embarrassment. Okay? I think it's going to be one of the greatest landslides in American history. So I'm going past that. I'm the architect of the new America. I have been in my last two books. I'm a, a, a leader in thinking you know that. I know someone to get mad. You know, how dare you say it? Well, I'm saying it. You don't write books to become bestsellers if you're not a leader in thinking. If you read it all before, you wouldn't buy the book. So in the book, Government Zero, I have many, many points, 40 points, of how to save America. 
what you're hearing about today is not in that book because I haven't thought about it till today, which is this. When Trump wins in a landslide and when the new government takes power in 2017 now, we're going to be faced with a huge problem, which are all of the bull weevils that Obama has planted like poison pills throughout the federal government. And then, of course, we have the organizations that we know are subversive, like the ACLU. Uh, I, I've named some of them. I'll name them again just for effect. Which organizations do you think need to be investigated by congressional committees when the new Congress convenes and taken down, taken apart and defunded? But more than that, if there is evidence of criminal activity along the way, punished for what they have done, are doing, and would do further to damage this nation. Because there are many organizations who is, whose every waking moment is about disrupting the so social order, attacking white people. You know what I'm talking about. Don't pretend it's not going on, and don't pretend Obama's not funding most of them. He specializes in this. They're his bread and butter. He is their bread and butter. He is diverting billions of dollars to them in order to continue to attack us. I'm getting very clear here, am I not? Suddenly you, saw, you hear clarity. You know what's going on. So I'm asking you to participate. Which organizations do you think are subversive and need to be investigated by the new Congress? Thomas on the Internet, welcome to the program. Name it. Your organization is? Yes, the National Lawyers Guild, as the 1958 Congressional Hearing on Un-American Activities uh, disclosed and, and exposed, that the National Lawyers Guild and American Bar Association were funds for the Communist Party, as well as, you know, APAC and there's a few ADL. So anyway, thank you for the opportunity. All right, he's right. The National Lawyers Guild is one of the most dangerous activist groups in the country. Every one of them is an enemy of the American way. Every last lawyer in the National Lawyers Guild is the type of lawyer that you have come to hate, in plain English. Now, they will tell you, oh, they're just for the underdog. They're for the poor immigrant. Well, you know what? That may be so. But I'm for the middle class. I want a lawyer's guild for the tax-paying middle class, not a lawyer's guild for the subversives who are bringing in refugees, immigrants, whatever you want to call them, by the tens of millions. If you want to know what this country will look like in 10 years, if this is not stopped, all you've got to do is look south of the border. And then all you've got to do is look in Fallujah. And then all you've got to do is look in uh, Somalia, and you'll have some picture of what districts or whole regions of inner cities will look like in this country unless these subversive groups are in fact not exposed and stopped. Now what is wrong with my statement? KSFO Mel, what group would you say is subversive? Uh, Catholic Charities, especially as I see it in Central California. Hold it, you said Catholic Charities. Now, the problem with this is that A, you're right, and B, most people would say, how can you attack a church? You know the answer to that. Catholic Charities is not a church, is it? No. Uh, I'm a big-time Catholic, and uh, this doesn't really reflect. Uh, my Catholic Charities is not a church. It uses the word Catholic in it, but it has as much to do with Catholicism as the moon does. Catholic Charities is a nonprofit organization that uses the handle of Catholicism to subvert America's immigration laws. They have... They are, and they will continue to flood America with illegal aliens. I suspect that, um, not suspect, I would agree with you. All of these groups, they're not alone, though. There's Baptist Charities. There's Baptist Family uh, Services. All of these church-related names of 501c3 uh, organizations need to be investigated and stopped, along with the others that we're talking about. I think this is a fabulous show topic, and I'd like you to join the program and name your organization, the organization rather, that rankles you, the one that's been eating at you for years that you know is doing harm to this country. Now, what do I mean by harm to the country? You see, now here's an interesting question. People would say, well, they're just liberals. They're pushing the liberal philosophy. You're a conservative. You like conservative ideas. Okay, that would be a fair statement. But when you are using your organization to go against the will of the people, and to go against the voters themselves, which these organizations do, then they are, my friends, subversive in the sense that they are, they are subverting 
the will of the majority of the American people. You cannot disagree with my logic. It is flawless. What I just said is flawless logic. It doesn't matter whether you agree with Catholic Charities or the ACLU or the American Bar Association or the American Lawyers Guild, National Lawyers Guild. What matters is what they are doing goes against the wishes of the majority of voters in this country. And that's why they have to be investigated, de defunded, and if any criminal acts have been found, will, if any criminal acts are found to have been conducted, prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, that when this show is circulated, circulated around this nation, and it will be, you're going to see things happen that you cannot believe. This show may not be the largest in talk radio, but it is one of the most influential. And by the way, I just won that case in the U.S. Supreme Court after a five-year battle. It was on the Drudge Report for, for, uh, for 24 hours. Everyone has seen that story. Everyone knows a few things as a result of it. And make no mistake about it, they're all listening to this show on a regular basis. They're not calling me a disc jockey anymore. They're not trying to make fun of me anymore. They shouldn't. They should take me very seriously. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Sav the emerging totalitarian Soviet states of America as a result of Barack Obama's leftist fanatics in the administration. How's that for a statement? Does that summarize it fairly well? And so you have to look at the American left and what they have done, what they would like to do to this country. In the political sphere right now, the most, um, the clearest exemplar of the radical left would be Barack Obama. He's gotten much, much further that anyone could ever have imagined they would have ever gotten in such a short period of time, and that's because he's such a silk-smooth salesman for the American left. And so we have to look into that right now. Now, running on the presidential platform, Bernie Sanders is an exact picture, a literal stereotype of the American left, going back, I would say, to the, uh, the ILGWU era of the International Ladies' Garment Workers' Union. He's a classic, low-grade garment workers' union a community agitator. So you want to look at the American left. You look into the civil rights movement, the war on poverty, the new left of the time, some of whom have now become great conservatives in their own mind. You'll see there's a Communist Party USA. They've disguised themselves now. They're running purely as Democrats. There was the Socialist Labor Party. There were overt Marxist-Leninist groups like the Freedom Road Socialist Organization, the Progressive Labor Party, the Revolutionary Communist Party, the Workers' World Party, but none of them really exist in that form anymore because they've been morphed into Barack Obama's administration. You then had Trotskyites who ran things like the Freedom Socialist Party, Socialist Action, Socialist Workers' Party, Solidarity, the Spartacist League, the Workers International League, but they're all small splinter groups right now because most of the leaders have been absorbed into the Obama administration. You then look at the anarchist and anarcho-syndicalist parties in the United States of America, the Green Party, and most of them have become very, very small because the leadership has been absorbed into the Obama administration or have been given jobs on MSNBC and other media outlets. So let's look into this in a little more detail for 2017, because we're going to have a lot of work on our hands in order to uncouple them from the social sphere. So let's see where this began. It began a lot, excuse me, long before uh, the 1960s. We had what we would call a socialism in the United States, a socialist type of movement in the United States of America. In fact, the first European socialists to have arrived in America were a Christian sect known as Labadists, who founded the Commune of Bohemia Manor in 1683, 60 miles west of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And they led a communal way of life, which was based on the communal practices of the apostles and early Christians. The first secular American socialists were German Marxist immigrants who arrived following the 1848 revolutions. So now I want to move forward into uh, our century and bring us up to our 